Hello! In this video, I will be explaining level 87 of the back rooms, also known as the Halls of Time. This level is great, it is scary, and time is so weird here that you might even see your own doppelganger as a time remnant. Just make sure if you do see yourself, never talk to it. Anywho, let's get into the explanation, shall we? Level 87 of the Backrooms is the 88th level in the Catalog of Lore, and it's been given a classification of a Class 1 difficulty, which means it is safe and secure with a small entity count. Now, the level and its content was discovered way back in the year of 2004 in the month of May, and it has been described as the following. The level consists of hallway corridors that are miles and miles long very similar to level 21. The hallways are plain and nondescript here, and even can be considered dingy to an extent, with harsh yellow lighting coming from the lights above. Alongside these cramped, liminal-esque hallways, there are locked doors on either side of the hallway that always seem to be barred or locked shut somehow. But sometimes you might find a key to open the door, on a nearby dresser or on the floor nearby. The hallways cross over each other and intersect and run into each other in weird spots as well. On your journey through these empty hallways, you might run across a table or a kind of a side table thing along the walls. These tables have been known to have snacks like chips and other vending machine style foods inside the drawers or on top of themselves, as well as you might run into some bottles of almond water. These dressers are where you could also find keys as well, and they're usually on top of the shelves or inside of a drawer here too. Oftentimes, these keys are either color-coded or named or numbered, that way you can find the correct door that they go to. Now, of course, all that sounds pretty normal. It's just hallways that look liminal. But the weirdest property that this level actually has, and the property that sets it apart from the other levels, is that time and spatial geometry is not linear here. Now, although it is uncommon, wanderers have reported seeing past or future versions of themselves for a few split seconds while walking around this level right before that version of themselves disappears. This can mean you see the childhood version of yourself just walking right down the hallway right past you, and they go into a room and shut that door behind them and, and you can't get in. Or you can see the future version of yourself sprinting past you. Oftentimes, wanderers report the scarier of the two is running into the future version of yourself, because that version hasn't come to pass yet. It's kind of like seeing a ghost. Now, these apparitions, these versions of yourself, they are real flesh and blood entities, and they are really walking around. Most times that you encounter them inside of the hallways, they will vanish very quickly or they will walk away very fast in order to not interact with them. But some people actually have managed to catch up to them and talk to these versions of themselves and they figured out some very interesting things about it. Oftentimes, these interactions are very emotionally charged, especially if you see the childhood version of yourself, because you see this innocent little version of you that hasn't seen the horrors of reality yet. Now, it is possible to give these versions of yourself, like, items and stuff that could help them survive, but doing this, you might run the risk of causing time paradoxes. The interesting way that this level kind of contains and solves these paradoxes is they create an infinite time loop of these past versions and the future versions of the level that kind of go out over and over again, which offsets the paradox that you yourself just made. And these are the loops that can cause the wanderers to have these strange interactions with their past self or their future self. Interacting, like I said, with these different versions could be very emotional, but it also could be very damaging to your mental health. It'll seem very, very uncanny talking to the spitting image of yourself, whether it's the past or the future, right in front of you. You won't be able to think about it. It doesn't seem real. It's also important to note that these anomalies do not always happen to people while they're exploring this level. You're not guaranteed to see the past version yourself, but it is pretty common. And if the level chooses to show you this past or future self, it's almost as if the level has chosen you as an important person for some reason. But just a general rule of thumb is that if you see yourself, whether it's the past or the future, do not interact with that thing because you don't want to mess up the timeline more than it already is. We don't really know the effects that it has outside of this level and the ramifications that you might run into later on. We're also not sure if these things aren't just entities disguising themselves as humans. We do think they really are copies of you, but we're not sure. So just play it safe and do not interact with them. Anyways, back to the level part, the rooms that you can get into using those keys and the doors are accessible from the hallways. These rooms are really nothing to note. They're just plain bedroom style lodgings 
kind of similar to hotel rooms or motel rooms, except they might be empty without any furniture here. This level is not described outright as a hotel or office complex, as there's no real defining features that would show exactly what it is. So it doesn't look like an office, doesn't look like a hotel. It just seems to be these arbitrary, randomly placed empty rooms and empty hallways. There's no rhyme or reason to any of it, yet there is rhyme and reason to all of it. The main thing you need to know while you're exploring level 87 is that you gotta be very careful when you interact with your past or future self. Like I said, we don't know if those versions are actually you, and they have been known to show aggression sometimes if you attack them. Some people have even claimed that these versions have tried to unalive the real version of you, and if that happened, well, the time paradox would be unfixable at that point. It's also unknown how this even happens, so. Ignore anything you see here, just walk straight, try to make it through the hallways, and try not to get lost. It seems like this level has some sort of time limit, or as if it's timing your stay here, and so it's imperative that you do not waste any time while being stuck here, because we don't have that much information about it, so the things I've told you today, that's literally all we have to work with. There's not a bunch of texts about it, there's not a bunch of reports about it, all that I just told you is all we got. So to enter the level, you can no-clip through a door on level 21, and then you need to find the exit as fast as possible, because this level might kind of trap you in this time loop. To exit, you need to walk around, ignoring everything you can, until you find a random door that you can no-clip through. Just try to no-clip through any door you can see, and you'll eventually find one. But if you successfully do this, you'll be sent to level 119, and out of this hellscape of time loops and paradoxes and seeing your past or future self. This is one of those backrooms levels that is so uncanny to even think about. These empty, nondescript, almost sanatorium-like hallways with nothing else but time paradoxes constantly happening where you're running into the past, future, or even current version of yourself. There's no known information on how the level does this or why it does this, but just as a general rule of thumb, like I've said 15 times in this video, do not interact with that person. That is not you, that is not a friend, it is something that's probably malevolent. Anyways, thank you for watching until the end of the video. If you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like. I'd really appreciate it. Click on the screen if you want to see another level like this. I upload these three to four times a week. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. If you want to check the description below for like my third channel, Spoogly, where I upload one video a week, or my podcast, where I have a bunch of friends on there. It's, it's a fun time. If you want any of that, it is always in the description. Also, my Twitter and Instagram, if you want to see kind of like a real life side of me, is down there as well. Thank you so much for all your support. I love and appreciate all of you. I cannot wait to show you what's coming. I have tons and tons of stuff coming. Sadly, I can't tell you what it is yet, but soon I will be able to. Anyways, thanks for everything, and I'll see you later.